So uh, I guess a million questions, but um, what was it actually about this story and project that said, oh, I need to do this? Well, um, many reasons. You know, it's, it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for a pretty unexperienced director to be offered that kind of job for a story that is so, I mean, I cried when I read the script and it was so moving for me that relationship between Ruth and Katie, you know, the whole theme about unconditional love. And I have a sister myself, I would do anything for her. And what would you do for family? Oh, com completely. One, one of the things about this film is stories like this are, are much tougher to get made nowadays. And I think that, you know, credit to Netflix for making it and telling this story. Oh, um, 100%. You know, um, so I just want to throw that out there. Big thank you to Netflix. Um, obviously, you haven't worked with Sandra before. Um, she is what we call a talented actor. What was what are some of the things that really surprised you about collaborating with her? Well, first of all, how approachable and grounded she is. I mean, given her status and her experience, you know, um, I think from the from the get go we made on we met on an eye to eye level and she is also a producer on that film, so she accompanied me in my process from the very first day until the very last day, and it was always you know um, the the question of what's the best choice for the story that we want to tell here and for Ruth's character and there is every nothing is random you know until like the black scratch nail polish of Ruth that she has in her flashbacks. Like so many thoughts we put into everything. That was just an amazing process. Um, I like talking to directors about editing because that's where the movie comes together. Um, this is one of those films where you have flashbacks, you have different timelines, if you will. Talk a little bit about the, the editing and you know the challenges that you faced once you got in the editing room to tell this story without giving away too much at points. And, and there you are already with the biggest challenge, you know, how much can we withhold without losing interest? And how much do we need to tell, you know, in order to make sense? And how do we balance all those different characters without being confusing? I think that is something, you know, that, that accompanied us through, through every um, version of the edit, it's almost like Jenga or Tetris when you, you know, take away on that side or you give too much here, an hour later, everything falls apart. Um, and, and yeah, it was, it was fascinating. It was trial and error. And in the end, I think we found the right balance. A hundred percent. Did you originally have a much longer cut? Um, how, like, did you have a cut that was like two and a half hours? You're like, I don't know how we're getting it any shorter. Well, not much longer, to be honest. I think we started off with a two hour 10, you know, so we lost 20 minutes in the process, but there were many moving pieces that, you know, some scenes that are now in the film that weren't there at all. And other scenes that were in there are now completely out. So it shifted around quite a bit. Um, what ended up being, let me say it like this. If you could go back to the first day of filming on the making of this movie, what would you tell yourself? What advice would you give yourself? Relax, enjoy the ride. Right, I, I'm sure it was, a, was it stressful for you though? Because making like a big movie like this with Sandra or did you sort of get to enjoy it? Um, both, you know, I mean, it's, I think directing is always overwhelming. You, you, there, there is always the time when you think like, oh God, I think somebody else should do that. You know, it's, it's a constant and probably for all departments, I think it's an artistic thing that you, you feel almost like you have a big grizzly bear behind you breathing in your neck that says like, other people could do that much better. <laughs> Wait and see until they find out. And you have to learn and live with that bear. And, um, and I think sometimes, you know, it's, it's easier to just chill out and enjoy the ride because I, I, I was supported by so many great people all along the way. It was sure. very magical. One of the things is your film got shut down because of COVID and 
I've spoken to a lot of filmmakers and they actually talk about how having a break in the middle of shooting is, is really beneficial because you can look at your footage, you can reassess everything. How did that shutdown possibly change the movie because you had more time to really think about everything? I mean, like you said, we edited what we had. And of course it was a very fractured cut, you know, missing a beginning, missing an ending, but we could see what works well and what does not work quite so well. And we adjusted the script according to that. Um, of course, it's always challenging, you know, to film half a film in winter and then the second half in summer and make it fit together, you know? So you have to put an extra effort into everything also to bring the energy back up. But yeah, it's just definitely it's a silver lining and, and there were some great benefits that we had. Was there any one particular thing that you took out or added that maybe would surprise fans to learn? Yeah, for example, the Wellen brothers, um, before COVID, they didn't have a mom. Oh, that is a big change. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm playing that all in my brain now and what it would have been without that. But <laughs> uh, what ended up being, when you look back, what was the sequence that really ended up being like a just a real pain in the ass. You know, the thing that just was, you know, in, on the shoot. Um, I mean, there are scenes that didn't end up in the film, you know, for, for probably a good reason, because for some reason or the others, we didn't really um, get to the best version of the film. And in the end, the, the best version of the film is without that scene. <laughs> Completely. No, completely. Um, are you already thinking about what you might want to do next? Have you had time to even digest that? Uh, not yet. I just had a, a baby <laughs> and now taking it easy for a little while. Um, I completely understand. Uh, um, my last thing for you, uh, Sandra doesn't talk that much in the movie. It's very deliberate when she speaks. Can you sort of talk about balancing that? Like, did you end up pulling back even more of the dialogue? Like, finding her voice, if you will. Yes, absolutely. It was, um, we always set off to start the journey with her being as close as possible. And then almost having that two hour process of witnessing her slowly open up. Um, and in the edit again, you know, it was a balance of how long are we as the audience willing to go with her, although she doesn't speak. And um, thank, <laughs> thanks to Sandy's eyes, you know, you, there is such a rich inner life. And then we added the memory layer as well to give a little hint that there is something warmer inside her as well, you know, and there is something that connects her with Katie and that kept her alive all the time inside. So. Um, I have to stop there. I'm just going to say congrats on the movie. And uh, after you have time with the baby, I hope you're making something again soon. Thank you. 